Good morning, YouTube friends and family. Hope everyone's doing well. Um, wanted to do a, a quick little video on the load board. I had hoped to um, late last night do another one. Um, if you've learned anything from my videos, hopefully it's that when you book a load soonest to the time it actually loads, the rate goes up. Avoid booking loads days in advance. Um, Amazon's algorithm is such that it prices accordingly to market conditions. And so when the market gets busier and there's a shortage of trucks, um, the rates go up to make sure that the load gets filled. And when people are booking loads a week in advance and, and you see it all the time, in, in the Facebook groups, guys are sitting here booking, you know, especially the box truck guys. Um, I, I get that a lot of you guys are not trucking industry veterans, um, but you guys really, really, really need to realize there's, in most market, there's probably too many trucks. And this is why when you finally get yourself set up with Amazon, you look and there's nothing there. There's work. The problem is people are booking them the minute they come out. And that's a telltale sign that your market is oversaturated. Amazon is doing this on purpose. Their algorithm is such that when, when they put out several routes and they get booked a week in advance at seventy, they realize that they have more trucks than they do loads. So over time, that $1.70 becomes $1.65. And if the same thing happens again, that $1.65 becomes $1.60. And then $1.50. And before you know it, you guys are giving away your work. Avoid booking in advance. Watch my videos, watch other people's videos. If you don't see loads, it's not that there's no loads there. People are taking them right away. The market's saturated and it's not as fruitful as you think. If you guys watch these other box truck videos where they're telling you they're making $3,000 a day, um, take that with a grain of salt. Take that with a grain of salt and understand that... Um, This gig isn't as fruitful as they're making it sound. You don't want to go into an oversaturated market. Amazon does this on purpose. They make it super easy to get on, even though you see some people on, on Facebook saying, oh, I don't get what the holdup is. Well, the holdup is probably they don't have the right insurance. I submitted my stuff, used my cell phone to apply and literally three days later, I had load board access. And so Amazon does this on purpose. They flood their market. That keeps the rates cheap. And if someone ever, you know, questions, hey, why are you doing this to the trucking community? They'll, they'll tell you, hey, our algorithm works this way. And it's the trucking community doing it to themselves. And it's absolutely correct. Anyway, um, someone not too long ago had asked, to do kind of a comparison. Um, I, I, it's not that I forget the comments, guys. I lost access to this load board because my insurance certificate, um, it didn't get sent to them until the day it renewed. And then it took them a couple days to, to review it and make sure it's done. <clears throat> a word of advice, if you just got on Amazon or if you're an existing carrier, and Amazon is, you know, your, your, only, your only ticket to ride, um, you do want to renew your insurance early. Um, you know, most of us do wait. Most of us wait until, you know, it, if it's going to expire tomorrow, we, we renew today primarily because we don't have to give that big down payment um, earlier. I mean, no one wants to 
send the down payment to their insurance a week early. Anyway, but the problem is if Amazon takes a while to approve, you may be out of work for a week. Um, in my case, it didn't really matter. And, you know, I, I haven't hauled a load for them since October, so it's no big deal. Anyway, so someone had asked me to compare Amazon in the local market to LA to um, Uber Freight. Uber Freight gets kind of a bad rap. Um, people say they're cheap. I believe Uber Freight uses the same type of technology where when they see things are easy to book at a certain rate, um, they, they start adjusting the rate down per mile. And then we as carriers need to be responsible not to take the stuff that's cheap so it doesn't work against us. Anyway, so here we have um, Long Beach to Stockton. So Northern, Southern California to Northern California. Um, 377 a mile. Here we have uh, a load going out to Phoenix. A little over 300 miles at 350 a mile. There's another Phoenix load, 351 a mile. There's a load going to Northern California up in Patterson, 331 miles at 326 per mile. There's a 1,000 mile load going to Aurora, Colorado at 321. That load was previously locked. Um, what that means is those loads are set aside for people with the higher performance value. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> the fact that it's unlocked means no one with the higher performance has taken it. And so as it approached as it approached the time, they um they unlock it just to make sure it gets covered. Um here's a thousand mile team load heading to Oregon. Um that's two ninety two per mile. There's a 971 mile load going to Oregon for 280 a mile. There's 966 also going to Oregon for 282 a mile. There's 1185 miles for 269 a mile going to Washington. There's 956 miles um, also going to Oregon for 262. There's 956 miles for 262, also going to Oregon. There's a load going to Utah, 657 miles for 262. There's 956 miles um, for 262 a mile heading to Oregon. There's 166 miles for 251 heading to Salt Lake City. Um, there's another load to Oregon for a thousand miles for 242. That's a team load. There's a thousand miles for 242 per mile, um, heading to Colorado. Another Colorado load for 242. Another Colorado load for 242. Oregon for 242. There's a load going to Georgia, a team load, for 242. There's a load going to Reno for 241. There's a load going to Georgia for 241. There's a load to Washington for 238. Michigan, 2,200 miles for 232. There's 1,390 miles going to Texas. That's the Dallas area. It's a team load for 232. There's 900 miles going to Oregon for 232. There's 1,000 miles um, heading to Colorado for 228. And these are Friday, so the, the rate will start dropping. And since the idea here was to compare to... Um, to what our friends over at Uber is doing, <clears throat> at the very top, 
there's a dedicated lane, um, 44,000 pound dry van, um, their, their filter, when you, when you do a search for a given area, their, their dedicated lanes will show up no matter what you filter. And so in this particular case, you know, it's not necessarily, um, it doesn't always fit that it's within your search criteria, but you know, there's a 400 mile load. There's, there's one available weekly and basically you bid on it. And if, if that's kind of a route that fits an existing load you have, it might be beneficial to you to bid it anyway. So right off the bat, we have a comparative load going to Aurora, Colorado. If we remember the Amazon load, this is 369. Um, I don't remember. But that's the perfect comparison. So there's, there's a load. Um, now granted, this is a power only, so you'd have to provide your own trailer. So the good comparison there, there's um, 321 per mile. There's 242 per mile. And so if we compare that to Uber, you know, granted this, you would have to bring your own trailer. Um, per mile, this is paid better. There's a load to Topeka, Kansas. Um, 1529 miles for 383. There's a load going to Windsor, Colorado. Um, 35,000 pounds. I mean, that's going to be one thing for sure. Uber's going to be heavier than Amazon. So keep that in mind. It, it's, it's not exactly apples and apples, especially going to Colorado because you're climbing all the hills. You're going to consume a lot more fuel. Um, but here you're at 379 per mile. There's another load to Colorado, um, at, um, 389 per mile. There's 417 per mile going to Aurora. Here's a load going to Fort Worth at 307 a mile. Um, instead of making the video that much longer, you know, we, we just saw a load going into the Dallas area. You could compare that. Here's a load going to um, Goodyear, Arizona, which is Phoenix. I want to say the Amazon load was like closer to a thousand bucks. So this one's four. 42 per mile. There's a load going to Henderson, Nevada, which is basically Vegas, 447 per mile. There's another Henderson at 442. There's a load going to Utah at 392, almost four bucks a mile. There's 397 per mile going to Phoenix, paid much better than the Amazon load. There's another load to Utah at 434. Again, much better than Amazon. There's, there's a load within California, 320 miles at 420, I'm sorry, 415 per mile. There's a load going to Northern California out to Tracy at 353 per mile. There's a load going to Illinois. Um, just under 2,000 miles at 305 per mile. There's a load to Huntsville, Alabama at $3 a mile. So under 2,000 miles for 6,000 bucks. There's a, <clears throat> a load ending in Kentucky. Remember, you'll have to get a permit in Kentucky if you don't already have one. I wanna say it's like 40 bucks for 10 days or something like that. Um, 228 per mile. There's a load heading to Indianapolis. Um, you can go visit the Hoosiers out there for 272 per mile. There's a load going to Utah, um, 650 miles for 285 per mile. 
There's another load to Phoenix at just under four bucks a mile, 384, 1380, still paid better than the Amazon stuff. Um, there's a load to Fresno, California, 388 per mile. I think that's a little on the cheap side, but to each their own. There's a load to Woodland, California, 421 miles at 366 per mile. There's another one also to Woodland, California at 385 per mile. There's another Phoenix load at 389 per mile. There's a local Fontana load, um, 813 per mile. On these, you have to be careful. And, and I'm, you know, as I thought it, you can see it. Um, so this load picks up on the 25th at 1600 hours and it does not unload until the 27th. And so basically you're storing their freight for 350 bucks. Um, and I, I don't know who the shipper is. Um, let's see if it opens it up and tells us. Ah, it's going to an Amazon location. <laughs> so yes, if you book this early, or if you book this and try to go do that load, um, they're not going to unload you until your unload time. And I can guarantee you, you'll end up sitting there for the two days that this schedule says for 350 bucks. That's, that's a hard pass right there. So there's a load to San Diego, 544 per mile, um, you know, for 112 miles. There's a Van Nuys load for 632 per mile. There's a load to Stockton at just under three bucks a mile. There's another Phoenix load at 419 per mile. There's a load to Boise, Idaho at 418 per mile. Not mad at that rate. That's a decent deal. Um, there's a load heading to Lakeland, Florida at 260 per mile. I wouldn't touch that with a 10 foot pole because you're not going to find anything good coming out of Florida. For me to go there, I'd have to be in the mid to high threes. And I know that sounds unreasonable for as far as it is, but you're gonna have to uh, you're gonna have to do the math for a couple hundred deadhead miles coming out probably into the Atlanta area. Um, there's an Indianapolis, Indiana load. It's 2,000 miles for 265. I think it's a little on the cheap side. Um, there's another Indianapolis load for 248. There's a Tolleson, Arizona. Tolleson's just west of Phoenix, um, 382 per mile. There is a West Sacramento load, 431 miles for 270. There's another Stockton load for 276. There's a load going to Buckeye for 429. There's a load going to Sacramento at 332. Another load to Sacramento for 332. There's a load to Utah for 399 per mile. There's another Utah load for 398 per mile. Another Utah load for 398. Fresno load for 333. Livermore load um, for 332. Another Tolleson load for 403 per mile. A load to Oxnard for 265 per mile. Mild stomping grounds there. Um, there's a load heading to Wisconsin um, for 302 a mile. There's another load to Oregon for 343. There's another Oregon load for 333. Woodland, California for 306. And then there's there's your dedicated stuff you can bid on. Um, and then we're jumping into another day. Um, these loads don't fluctuate much by day. Um, they do tend to stay the same. That's kind of the advantage with booking with 
with this particular app, you know, your loads for, for Friday are going to be really close to the same rate you're finding on loads for Thursday. And so you can book a couple days in advance, rest assured you got a decent paying load and, and enjoy your time off. Um, or, you know, if you're still coming into town, you already know you got something booked coming out. Anyways, someone had asked to do kind of a comparison there. Um, you know, Uber's definitely paying better than Amazon. Um, on the Facebook groups, you hear a lot of people complaining that, that the rates are still dropping with Amazon. Again, they keep allowing new carriers in, and I know a lot of you guys are, are all fired up to get in there. Um, the more carriers they let in, the cheaper it's going to go. It's no different than if you've ever been to an auction. Um, if there's a lot of buyers, they're going to drive the rate up. If there's very few buyers, the odds of you getting a decent deal is better because there's less competition. Or if you're showing up, let's say, let's say you go buy your box truck at an auction and you show up and there's 50 of these things, the odds of you getting one at a really, really cheap deal are pretty good because they'll run out of buyers before they run out of trucks. Um, years ago, I purchased um, reach forks that brand new or almost $100,000. These things were two and three years old and the very first ones were going for 40, 50 grand, um, but 10 units or lots as they call them later you know, the same exact make, model, hours, everything, um, 17, five, 20,000 bucks. I picked up three of them for 17,000 bucks and I ran the crud out of those things for three and a half, four years in my rental business and then ended up selling them for about 40 a piece. Um, the same thing happens in, in the Amazon load board, guys. You have a lot of truckers, they're gonna drive the price down and just be ready for that. Anyways, just keep that in mind. Amazon can be Amazon can be a great stepping stone for you to start operating while your authority matures a little bit. You know, between 30 and 90 days is what most brokers want. Um, I would I would use them for that and maybe keep them as a backup in case other markets dry up but I would not jump into them as my, you know, this is my only game plan. Um, don't make that your only, your only ticket to ride, guys. You, you'll, end up, you'll end up in the poorhouse. Anyways, as always, thanks for watching. Um, uh, sorry I'm not like taking the time to do other, I, I didn't do like a little intro on this one. I just went straight to the load board. Um, I'm waiting on someone to, to show up here so I can go, um, I'm going to have breakfast with someone, potential driver I'm going to hire this week. And so I just try to get this video out quickly and, and, and get it to you guys. Um, I'll start loading up some more videos here for the load boards pretty quick now that my um, Amazon is active again. As always, thanks for watching.